Hello everyone, welcome back. So, we are in the last lecture of this module and uh, till date what we have learned is uh, the Hamilton's principle and we have also derived Lagrange equation of motion and using that we have also solved some problem and we have seen how to derive the equation of motion once we define the generalized coordinate. In this lecture what we are going to uh, learn is what is what is Hamiltonian and that is the first question we will answer and then um, Hamilton's canonical equation. We can derive the equation of motion using this uh, approach and that is what we are going to uh, investigate today. Now, for that uh, let us recall what is Lagrangian, right. So, if you recall L is equal to T minus V. So, this L is a function of uh, q k, q k dot and t. Also, what is q k dot? This is the first derivative of q k that is the generalized coordinate with respect to time. Now, we have also derived Lagrange equation and what is that equation? If you recall, this is d dt of partial derivative of L with respect to q k dot minus partial derivative of L with respect to q k is equal to 0. Note that right hand side is equal to 0 simply because there is no force we used uh, when we derived this equation. Now, from this equation what we can say is that if we take this second term on the right hand side. So, this is equal to that is straightforward and uh, then uh, we again if you take this L equal to T minus V and then uh, if you differentiate L with respect to q k dot then on the right hand side what you will get it is the partial differential of T with respect to q k dot then minus partial differential of V with respect to q k dot, but as you all know v is not a function of q k dot and therefore, this will go to 0. Now, what is t? That you can easily conclude is that it is summation of half m that is mass of the kth particle. So, m k then q k dot square. Then uh, if you perform this what you get is basically uh, m k times um, q k dot and this is what we call p k and uh, this is the generalized momentum. Right. So, up to this point it is fine. So, what we have done is uh, the Lagrange equation of motion and then from that we derived some of the expression. Now, what we will do is that uh, we will um, consider L this Lagrangian and then 
uh, we will take the first derivative of L with respect to T. So, this is what we will do. Now, uh, what we know that Lagrangian is a function of q k, q k dot and t. So, if I differentiate with respect to t, I can apply uh, definitely chain rule. So, what we will have the first term then the second term will be partial differential of L with respect to q k dot and then derivative of q k dot. So, that will be q k double dot plus partial differential of L with respect to t. Okay. Now, if you look at this expression, then we have derived just now what will be the expression for this quantity and that is here. So, what we will do? We will replace partial differential of L with respect to q k and in place of that what we can write is d d t then partial differential of L with respect to q k dot times q k dot plus the remaining part will be as is. Now, if you look at this expression, we can actually simplify this expression. What we can write is d d t of um, q k dot times partial differential of L with respect to plus. So, if you open this bracket obviously, you will get the term you can see above here in this line. right? Okay. Now, if you look at this again, we have derived um, the expression for partial differential of L with respect to q k dot. Right. So, this we have already derived and it is here. So, what we are going to do is replace that with whatever we have derived. So, it is d d t within bracket q k dot times what we have is p k that is generalized momentum plus d l sorry do l dot e. Okay. So, what you can see is that we have derived the expression of first differential of Lagrangian with respect to t. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the first term where again we have a first derivative uh, with respect to t of this third bracketed quantity. Now, what we can do? We can mm, take this inside and then what we will get is uh, this quantity is equal to minus of now uh, this third bracketed quantity is this one here we denote it by h. So, ultimately what we get is
this relation very important relation between h and l. So, this is a very important relation what is h? h is called Hamil. We will see in a minute what we mean by this Hamiltonian, but for the time being this is a very important relation that we have derived and uh, the relation between h and l is established in this important expression. Now, uh, if we consider a system uh, where uh, l, l is what? l equal to t minus v and uh, l does not change with time. So, we consider a system where l does not change with time. In that case, what will happen? Obviously, the right hand side. So, if we differentiate l with respect to t, because is it does not change, so it will be 0. Or in other words, it implies that this quantity is equal to 0. right? And if that is the case, then uh, what will be h? h that is Hamiltonian, this is constant. So, we get a another important relation that for a system where l does not change with time, our h is constant. We will see the expression of h in a minute and uh, then we will uh, explain what we mean by h. So, if we write down what is h, we have already derived that is p k q k dot minus l. Now, if we have a particle then for the complete set of particles. So, we have to sum them up. right? And then uh, we know what is the expression of p k. So, if I write that down, so it will be summation over k. I am not writing the range of k. So, it will be m k times q k dot times another q k dot because that is already there minus in place of L we can write T minus P. Now, what is this quantity the first one under summation? I am sure all of you can uh, identify this. If I just rearrange this take uh, 2 inside and multiply this quantity by half, then this is nothing but the kinetic energy T. So, we have 2 T minus T plus V. So, ultimately what we get 2 T minus T, so that is T plus V. So, what we get H is equal to T plus V. That is, it is the total energy. So, now we get the expression for Hamiltonian that is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. Now, if I go back to the relation that we have already derived for a system if L does not change with time H is constant which otherwise signifies that total energy is conserved. Okay. So, that is the important derivation. So, we answer the first question what we mean by mean by Hamiltonian. Right. So, this derivation shows us that Hamiltonian is nothing but the total energy in a system. right? And we have also derived a few important e 
equation and out of that this is the most important it correlates the Hamiltonian and Lagrangian. Okay, so, first part is answered. Now, if I move over to the second part of the question, what we mean by Hamilton's equation and obviously, that will have a another question as a consequence, can we derive the equation of motion using um, Hamilton's equation. So, that is what we are going to answer now. Now, uh, we start with Hamiltonian, which is a function of q k, then we have generalized momentum and then time, right. So, that is the starting point. Now, if we take the differential of this quantity, then what will happen? We can apply again chain rule Now, we have already derived a relation um, that h is nothing but summation of uh, p k q k dot this is not capital K, this is small k minus L. So, this is what we have already derived. Now, from this expression again, if I write down what will be the differential of the Hamiltonian, then it will be k, then p k plus Right. Now, we have also derived the expression for Lagrangian and what is Lagrangian? L, it actually depends on q k, q k dot and t. So, if we find out the differential of Lagrangian, then again exactly similar way we can uh, write down. Now, if you go back to our previous uh, derivation, you see we have already derived uh, this expression. So, if I differentiate partially Lagrangian with respect to q k dot, what I get is the generalized momentum, right. So, that means, in place of uh, this expression, we can write generalized momentum. So, if we do that, what we will get is uh, the second term will be um, p k do d q k dot plus do l do t d t and the first term again we see we have um, 
this expression. And uh, and in place of that, what we can write down is uh, okay. So, obviously, uh, for all the particles, we'll have summation because we have k particles. So, there will be summation and again I am not writing the limits of k. Now, what we do? We have uh, the expression for this uh, d l that we can here. So, if you do that, what we will have is summation over k, we have p k d q k dot plus summation over k, then d p k q k dot and in place of d l, we can write summation over k, then p k dot d q k minus summation k, then we have p k d q k dot minus Okay. Then, obviously, you can see we can cancel these two quantities. So, effectively what we have? We have summation over k and minus again summation over k p k dot d q k minus dot l dot t t. Okay. Now, we have two expressions of uh, d h. So, one is here and another is there. Then what we can do is can compare the coefficients. Now, what you can see is here in the first term, if I consider this equation, the first term we have, let me use a different color. So, we have d q k here and we have d q k here. Now, if I compare the coefficient, obviously, the first equation what we get is uh, so that is the first equation. Similarly, If I consider the second term, we have d of p k that is the generalized momentum and here we have the same quantity. Now, if we compare their coefficient, I get the second equation and that is Then finally, 
we have dt here and dt there. So, if I consider the coefficient and then equate them, so what we can identify is that the third uh, relation. Out of that, the first and second relation, this is called Hamilton's canonical equation. We will use them in a minute and we will derive the equation of motion of a pendulum, but what we have derived now is the Hamilton's canonical form and what we can see is we have two equations. So, if we have say one generalized coordinate even for that we have two equations and then these are first order differential equations uh, relatively easier to handle than um, the second order differential equations we have in Lagrangian. So, this is another important derivation. So, that gives us the Hamilton's uh, canonical equation and then uh, obviously, as I said earlier that a natural consequence is uh, to check whether we get the governing equation of motion same as we have derived earlier and for that let us consider the example. So, what we have again a pendulum right that we have already derived and then a bob is again hanged using a cord whose length is fixed. So, we again have the physical coordinate and then we have a generalized coordinate and then if we identify the dimensions. So, what we have here is uh, L minus L cos theta and this will be L cos theta and this curved path, this is S. So, what we have is uh, S is equal to L times theta. So, S dot will be what L theta dot. Now, if I find out what is the kinetic energy T is what we have already derived, it will be half m and then L theta dot square. So, this is half m L square theta dot square. We can also derive what is V, V is m g then L into 1 minus cos theta. Now, once we do that, we know what is Lagrangian and that is T minus V. So, if I just write down the expression, what we have is half m L square theta dot square minus m G L into 1 minus cos theta. Okay. Now, we have already derived the relation that the partial differential of L that is Lagrangian with respect to Q k dot is what? P k that is generalized momentum, right. So, in our problem Q k is actually theta. So, if I rewrite this expression, so what we have here partial differential with respect to theta dot is equal to p theta. Okay. So, if that is the case, then what is p theta? p theta is equal to partial differential of L with respect to theta dot. Now, if we do that, what we get is p theta 
we have to differentiate this expression of Lagrangian with respect to theta dot. If we do that, we will get m l square and then um, theta dot. So, p theta dot that that is if I differentiate p theta that is the generalized momentum with respect to t what we will have is m l square theta double dot. Okay. Now, we have also derived h that is Hamiltonian is what? Hamiltonian is p k times q k dot minus Lagrangian. So, if I again modify in terms of our generalized coordinate in this problem, so in place of k we will have theta, right. So, we will have p theta then theta dot. So, we can now uh, further uh, estimate this expression. So, what we have is p of theta. So, let us write it down. So, m l square theta dot times theta dot again. So, it will be square minus what we have l and that is half m l square theta dot square plus m g l 1 minus cos theta. So, if we further simplify obviously, what we get is half m l square theta dot square plus m g l into 1 minus cos theta. Recall what is Hamiltonian? Effectively, it is the summation of kinetic energy and potential energy and that is what you get here, right. That is the total energy. Now, uh, we can actually uh, modify this expression further because uh, we have p theta which is m l theta dot. So, if we modify this, what we have is half m l square and then uh, in place of theta dot, what we can write theta dot is equal to p theta divided by m l square. So, if I write it p theta divided by m l square whole square plus m g l into 1 minus cos theta. So, effectively what we will get? We will get um, half. So, h will be equal to half then p theta square divided by m l square plus m g l into 1 minus cos theta. We are almost there. So, if you recall, the first canonical form is what? Partial differential of h with respect to q k is equal to minus p k dot. And the second one is partial differential of h with respect to generalized momentum is q k dot. Now, let us consider the first equation and then uh, in our problem we have partial differential of h with respect to theta will be equal to minus p theta dot. So, if we find out that uh, what we have is the expression for Hamiltonian 
and that we need to differentiate with respect to theta and if you do that what we will get is uh, the first term will go to 0 and then the second term will give you m g then uh, l and we will have sin of theta which is equal to minus of p theta dot and that we have already derived this is the expression. So, we have minus m l square theta double dot. So, ultimately what we get theta double dot plus g by l sin theta is equal to 0. So, again we get the same equation that we derived earlier using Lagrange equation. Now, uh, in this problem we are yet to use the second equation. Let us quickly investigate if we use the second equation what we get. So, what we have is the second equation partial differential of h with respect to p theta is equal to q k dot. In so, our generalized coordinate is theta. So, right hand side will be theta dot. Now, what is theta dot? We have already derived that quantity. So, right hand side will be we expect um, in place of theta dot. Now, we can write p theta by m l square. Now, what will be the left hand side? If we differentiate uh, this uh, expression of Hamiltonian. So, second term will vanish because it is not a function of p theta. So, the first term will give us uh, p theta divided by m l square which is again equal to p theta by m l square. So, this equation is not required for the pendulum problem, but again it satisfies the criteria. So, we do not need second equation, but the first equation offers us the same governing equation of motion where natural frequency of the system is square root of g by l that what we have already derived using different approaches. So, uh, what we can see is again uh, using canonical form also we get the same equation of motion. So, that is extremely important. Now, uh, before we uh, conclude this lecture, I just wish to show you that if we have a elastic body, and then if we start from the continuum mechanics then uh, for this body do we get the same uh, Hamiltonian's equation or not. So, that we will investigate although in our uh, course on structural vibration we do not need this, but again it is uh, good to see whether we get the same equation. So, I will just take 5 to 10 minutes to investigate whether we get the same set of equation, but in this derivation we are going to adopt some index notation. So, uh, I am sure all of you are uh, familiar with the stress field and if you recall the equation for the stress field when we deal with a body is this equation. Obviously, what is sigma i j? These are the different components of stresses developed within the body and uh, this notation comma j means we differentiate this with respect to j. Now, effectively this equation is nothing but d 
Lambert's principle. Okay. But it is written in terms of uh, the stress field generated uh, when uh, we apply a force on an elastic body and that also moves uh, with a displacement u in the xyz coordinate. Those who are not familiar with this notation, I will just uh, suggest you to go through the books of continuum mechanics and you will immediately get this equation. But again, it is exactly the same uh, equation that we wrote earlier in a discrete form using D. Lambert's principle. And then, uh, if you have a body and in a x, y, z coordinate, obviously there will be body force and there will be traction and this body there will be some external forces also and uh, this body moves with uh, displacement u of t. And in that case, uh, we also know what is uh, the traction force T i, it is nothing but sigma i j dot n j. What is n j? If we take a surface, at that point, if we define the plane and then we can define the direction cosines and that is uh, given by this uh, ng. Now, the question is uh, again uh, if we follow the variational principle. So, we have uh, the displacement field u of uh, x which is a vector and then t. So, this is the displacement field. And then what we will do? We will apply a virtual displacement and this virtual displacement obviously for the ith particle if we consider will satisfy uh, the admissibility condition and that means if we start from T 1 and go to T 2, this uh, virtual displacement at T 1 and T 2 will be equal to 0. This we have already uh, discussed when we um, derive the expressions for um, first variations. right? Now, uh, if we define the virtual work done and that is by the external force. So, it is uh, delta w e. So, what will be that external force? There will be some traction. Uh, so, this is the traction force and there will be some uh, other uh, point forces say f i denoted by f i in this expression here. So, traction force actually acts over the surface. So, if we consider a differential surface, so we will have T i is the traction force acting over a surface of d s and that we multiply with d u i. So, that is the contribution from the traction force plus we have the um, volume integral of f i acting over a differential volume dv times delta u i. Now, once we have a combination of surface integral and volume integral, uh, we can actually convert them uh, into a volume integral. I will come to that in a minute, but before that what we can see is the expression for traction force is already there. So, in place of uh, T i, we can write down that expression and uh, the first term, so it will be surface integral, we have 
sigma i j times the direction cosines then delta u i d s plus volume integral f i let me write delta u i first and then d v. Now, to convert this surface integral we use Gauss divergence theorem. What it says? It says uh, that surface integral of the form will be replaced by the volume integral Now, if I use this relation, what we will get here is um, the volume integral V, then obviously, we have you can identify sigma i j times uh, delta of u i. So, if I apply this operator over that, so what we will have sigma i j comma j delta u i plus sigma i j times delta u i comma j times d v. So, this is the chain rule that I have applied plus the second term volume integral f i delta u i d v. Okay. So, what we can see is that we have volume integral sigma i j times j plus we can take this f i inside f i whole multiplied by delta u i d v plus volume integral sigma i j delta u i comma j d v. Okay. Now, this first bracketed term you can easily identify what we have at the top. So, this is delta v we can use this relation and then we have rho and then if you look at the second term obviously, we can identify displacement field if I differentiate then what we get we get the strains right. So, it will be volume integral the stress sigma i j times delta epsilon i j d v. So, that is the strain when we differentiate the displacement field and then uh, we get epsilon i j. Okay. Now, uh, we can further modify this expression. Uh, let me just uh, rewrite this expression. So, delta w e is equal to volume integral rho that is the density plus the second term volume integral sigma i j times Now, what is this quantity? 
this is the variation of strain energy density. Now, if you multiply that with dV and integrate over the volume, then uh, we can easily conclude this will be delta of u. I put a bar here just to differentiate from the displacement field. So, what is u bar? This is nothing but the strain energy okay, stored in the system. So, that is the strain energy stored in the system. And now, if you focus at the first part, so it will be volume integral rho. So, we have u i of double dot and then delta u i dv. Okay. Now, if we integrate both sides of the equation over time, so between time point t 1 to t 2, then on the right hand side what we will have, we will have t 1 to t 2, then volume integral. rho u i double dot delta u i d v plus ok. Now, you can easily sense what we are going to do, uh, we are going to perform integration by parts here, because if we do that, uh, we have this virtual displacement. Obviously, at the boundary, we can put some uh, conditions and then we can further simplify. That we will do in a minute. So, before that, let me just uh, modify this expression. So, what we have is uh, T 1 to T 2 delta W e d t and then take the other part also in this side, so that our job becomes simpler. So, this is equal to T 1 to T 2, then volume integral rho u i double dot delta u i d v d t. Okay. So, what we will do is then integration by parts. So, obviously, volume integral rho then uh, u i dot d v times delta u i evaluated over t 1 to t 2 minus all over integral t 1 to t 2. Then, uh, we will have rho u i dot then uh, delta u i dot d v d t. So, what we have done is again integration by parts. Now, uh, you can easily conclude that we have this quantity at t 1 to t 2. So, this will be equal to 0 and then we will be left with actually the second part. So, this is nothing but minus we have integral t 1 to t 2 and then uh, this uh, delta operator 
it can commute. So, what we can do is delta then obviously half v rho ui dot ui dot dv dt. Again I repeat, so this delta operator what we have it commutes with the integral and then uh, if we simplify we get this expression. Now, you can conclude that this quantity inside the third bracket is what? This is nothing but the kinetic energy. So, what we have effectively is T 1 to T 2 delta W e minus u bar d t is equal to minus t 1 to t 2 then delta t d t. So, effectively what we get? We get uh, integral t 1 to t 2 delta of uh, W e minus uh, this is uh, u bar then plus t d t is equal to 0. Now, uh, what we know uh, from the principle of um, minimum potential energy is that what is V is nothing but minus W E that is the external work done. So, if I uh, bring in that relation, so what we have ultimately from this uh, expression is T 1 to T 2 and then what we have is delta of T minus uh, u bar plus v d t is equal to 0. And then uh, what is u bar plus v? This is what we normally denote it by pi, that is what we call the total strain energy, right. So, in place of u bar plus v, what we can write is t minus phi. And for this system, what is L? It is t minus phi. And then we can further modify this equation. So, it is delta of L dt is equal to 0. And again, this delta parameter commutes. So, it will come inside. And that is the Hamilton's principle. So, what you can see from this derivation is that if we have a elastic body and if we start from the definition of uh, stress field and we consider the body force traction and uh, the displacement field, then obviously using virtual work done, we can again derive the Hamilton's principle as you can see. The only uh, addition is that here in this equation, we have uh, potential energy and also we have to consider the external work done. So, total strain energy we have to consider to define the Lagrangian. So, that is the only difference than what we had earlier, where we only considered the particles. So, 
again uh, this derivation actually uh, tells us how uh, the same Hamilton's principle uh, we can derive from the concept of continuum mechanics. And uh, I will not go into further details because this course is uh, not on continuum mechanics, but on structural dynamics. So, let us come back with an example I will close. So, the important um, equation that we have derived is uh, Lagrangian equation and that is dou L dou Q k dot minus L dou Q k is equal to 0 if we have no force or otherwise if we have some external force. So, we will have Q k. or we can write Q k we used earlier. So, say write F k. So, the example that we are going to solve is um, a cart which is moving over a horizontal plane and this is x of t and then it also has a inverted pendulum. So, this is our y axis and then the mass of the cart is capital M and the bob is small m. So, L is the length of the cord. It is basically a arm that length does not change and then we have theta. So, in this case generalized coordinate Q k is what we have x and theta. Two degrees of freedom, and then for this problem, what we are going to do, we are going to derive the equation of motion. And you can easily sense now we have a transition from single degree of freedom system to multi degree of freedom system, and that is where this uh, Lagrange equation of motion is very handy. We can derive easily the equation of motion, and we will see in a minute what we get. Now, uh, in this problem, let us also consider a force acting. So, at this uh, cart, uh, we have a force f of t. Okay. So, what we can write is the coordinate of this uh, bob is say x m y m and then x m is what? x minus L cos theta that you can easily sorry it will be x minus actually this quantity. So, that is sin theta. So, x minus L sin theta. What is y m? This is L cos theta. So, we can find out their derivative with respect to time. So, x m dot will be what x dot minus L uh, theta dot cos theta. Similarly, y m dot will be what will be minus L theta dot sin And for this problem, we can easily write down the kinetic energy. 
So, what will be the kinetic energy? It will be half m capital M that is the mass of the cart then x dot square plus half then mass of the bob and then x m dot square it will also have uh, the same quantity in the y direction. So, y m dot square. Now, we have already derived the expression for x m dot and y m dot. So, what we have half m x square plus half m in place of x m, but we can write x dot minus l theta cos theta whole square plus half m. Then in place of y m dot, we can write minus l theta dot sin theta whole square. So, if you simplify this expression, ultimately what we will get half m x dot square plus half m within bracket we have x dot square minus twice l x dot theta dot cos theta plus we will have l square theta square cos square theta plus from this term also we will have l square theta square sin square theta. And then obviously, we can simplify this term if we take l square theta square common. Uh, I think I have missed a dot here. So, a dot there and a dot there. So, we can take l square theta dot square common. So, within bracket we will have cos square theta plus sin square theta which is 1. So, we can further modify this expression. So, we will have this is the expression for kinetic energy. What about potential energy? V is equal to m g and then obviously, L cos theta there will be no change of uh, the position of capital M from the datum. So, uh, only it, the potential energy will have contribution from the bob and then we can define what is the Lagrangian that is T minus V. Now, uh, if I just write down this expression, so um, this will be what half m plus small m, then we can take x dot square plus half m l square theta dot square minus m l x dot theta dot cos theta minus m g l um, cos theta. Okay. So, let us now apply, we have uh, derived the expression for Lagrangian. So, let us apply uh, the Lagrange equation. The first equation will be what? Uh, d d t of partial differential of L with respect to first generalized coordinate that is x minus dou L dou. So, this will be x dot sorry. So, dou x. This will be equal to what? We have a force acting. So, it will be not equal to 0, but the force acting along uh, that degrees of freedom. Now, if you do that, uh, of course, uh, we can uh, now differentiate this Lagrangian with respect to um, x dot partially and then take the time derivative. 
and finally, subtract the differential of L with respect to x, uh, but I leave that exercise for you. So, what we will get is m plus m x double dot minus m L theta double dot cos theta minus m L theta dot square sin theta is equal to f of t. So, that is the first equation. Again, I am not uh, going through step by step, leave it as an exercise. So, this is a home task for you, just uh, do it and cross verify whether you get the same equation. Now, the second equation will be d d t partial differential of L with respect to the second generalized coordinate that is theta dot minus dou L dou theta and now there is no force acting. So, this will be 0 and if you do that, you will ultimately get m L square theta double dot minus m L then x double dot cos of theta then minus m g L uh, sin theta is equal to 0. So, that is the second equation. Again I repeat, so I do not go through each and every step now, um, you can do it and cross verify, but you will ultimately get these two set of equations. Now, if you look at this equation, it is a second order differential equation and the most important thing is that this equations are coupled, right. So, we have two degrees of freedom x and theta and if you look at this expression uh, of equations that we have derived, they are coupled equation. Of course, if we have a very small theta, then we can further simplify this because sin theta will be theta and uh, cos theta will be 1, but again uh, this is a complex set of equations where uh, these variables are coupled and as we progress in this course in the next week, you will see how to solve coupled differential equations. But uh, this example again gives you the idea how for a multi degree freedom system, we can adopt Lagrange equation of motion and then derive the governing equations. And that is the starting point for any analysis. Once we have the governing differential equations, then we can solve it and then we can find out what is the response quantity. So, I hope uh, this idea is clear. So, we can uh, adopt Lagrange equation of motion. We can also use uh, Hamilton's canonical form, but we will prefer to use Lagrange equation of motion uh, in our derivations. And in fact, uh, in the next week, when we will first consider a 2 degrees of freedom system, we will again use Lagrange equation of motion to derive the equation of uh, governing equation of motion and then we will solve it. With that, let me close here. Thank you very much. Thank you.